Hi, I'm Sang Gauja Lautrec on Moulin Rouge. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go to Paris. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ricky Rapas and I play Santiago in Moulin Rouge, the musical. And hey, I'm Eric Tveit. I play Christian in Moulin Rouge, the musical. <laughs> All right. Oh man, it's just us. This is dangerous. Oh, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm having flashbacks. Man, I miss you guys, man. Oh, this thing's st- Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's just it's wild. What a what a world. What a life. That's yeah, what a um brick wall you've got behind you, Aaron. Well, thank you, yes. Yeah, it is, man. Yeah, in, in um, the new spot, renovations yeah. done. It's, it's great. Nice. I, yeah, I was thinking about you about that. Like I wonder how that whole thing it's like did like, you pause? <laughs> you must pause, right? Yeah. <laughs> People like you can't come in because you know you don't want to get oh, COVID. They don't want to yeah. give you COVID. We were three and a half weeks from being done when the pandemic hit. And so just anyway, but yes, in and all good. Well, and Ricky, you were also uh, renovating your place, weren't you? Weren't you? Well, I could get kind of, but then COVID hit, and I'm kind of stuck in a half renovated place <laughs> out in France. So I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting on with jobs slowly, slowly, slowly. Um, yeah. I'm start, uh, the back wall of my property, which is just there, and uh, the exterior, the exterior, I'm going to start pointing, which is like. A line more to mix in between the tufo stone. Oh wow! And I'm just ah. doing all of them backward. It's going to take a while. Mm. When was your place built? Oh, I think like, around, they, like, how long, like where the original parts. When are they from? Oh, the original parts would have been from like the late 1800s, I think. That's just wild. Yeah, mm. proper old farm. Yeah, proper old farmhouse. Awesome. Speaking of the late 1800s. Um, in France (laughs) in France in France in the late 1800s I just realized I'm like proper authentic Santiago now because I was born in South America as Santiago would have been Mm. Mm -hmm. right spent and like speak Spanish and then spent Mm. and like lives in France how mental is that I mean, yeah, I, knew, it's, it's I, I heard you were a method actor, but you're really taking it like. I mean, I'm. I mean, I'm taking yeah. it to the level. All the way there. Yeah. 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 You, you nice. really step up. Taking it all the way. Move to France. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of taking it all the way, how well did you guys know the movie Moulin Rouge before signing on to the show? Ah. Uh, me well, I'll take this one. I was. I. I, mm-hmm. I knew it well. Like. Um, you know, I, uh, obviously gr- grew up in Australia. I was in Australia when it was being filmed. It was filmed in Sydney and I had oh. loads of friends. I didn't know like that. Me uh, either. Oh, I guess I just assumed it was like in England or something, but that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Neither of us knew that it was uh, filmed in, in Sydney. It was Sydney. filmed in Sydney and I was there and a lot of my friends were in it, um, as, uh, the ensemble and things like that. And, um, oh. loads of good Australian actors like, um, Richard Roxburgh, who played the Duke was in it. Um, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I, Caroline thought he, I also always thought he was English until this season of the crown Same. as an Australian. Oh, yeah. like, oh, he's an Aussie. Aussie, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was massive. It was massive. So I knew quite a lot, of, quite a lot about it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Huh. What about you, sir? Um, you know, I, I saw it, you know, I, I saw it when it came out. Uh, I was one of those people who, you know, I, I didn't really know Boss until Moulin Rouge, um, until Romeo and Juliet. And that was, you know, so groundbreaking and exciting to me anyway, I, I guess to a lot of people, but, um, yeah. So, you know, after that, I was waiting for Moulin Rouge and, um, yeah, I was quite pleased. I loved it. Yeah, same with me. Like, I was first aware of him with Romeo and Juliet, and it was weird. I think that was like, I'm, I'm, I'm revealing my age, but I think that was like a seventh or eighth grade date movie. You know, that, that Romeo and Juliet it was like a, that was a solid move, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then the, uh, then Moulin Rouge came out, Rouge came out my, uh, my freshman year of college, and I think that was really interesting because it was kind of before, uh, 
but there wasn't a lot of musicals in kind of mainstream culture, right? And so mm -hmm. I thought it was really cool yeah. because it was this musical on film that used all the elements of film, but then all this pop music. I just I was really uh, I was really struck by it because it, I didn't really know anything else like it at the time, and yeah. I was an impressionable eighteen year old. I, I I quite liked it. Yeah. I mean, Baz Luhrmann was 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 smashing it in the late '90s. Like when when he first brought out Strictly Ballroom, right? That was his, the first one yeah. of his. Um, I think it was his Red Curtain trilogy or Red Carpet trilogy. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, it was all to do with dance and and obviously uh, ballroom dancing. And I was like, ah, oh, this is awesome. Mm. And then, um, of course, Romeo and Juliet came out. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, <it's> <laughs> a Latino, a Latino, like, you know, a oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Then, but also another, like, he keeps on, he kept on putting Hispanic people like in his movies. And I was like, this is so cool. Like yeah. in Strictly Ballroom, there was a, a Hispanic actor who played the flamenco guy. Right. And mm. then, um, it was uh, John Luisiamo who was Tybalt in um, Romeo and Juliet. That's right. And of course, in Moulin yeah. Rouge, John Luisiamo was in it again, and also the uh, narcoleptic Argentinian's character. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah, he has stacked up. Like, this is so cool. You know? Yeah. Um, when he made it, um, it was when MTV was still doing music videos. Right. You know, and um, only. Hype Williams and Baz Luhrmann, in my opinion, had kind of crossed this barrier of shooting film in a music video style. You know, with yeah. the fast cuts. Are you, and making like really are, you making to, uh, are you making reference to Belly right now? Because if you are, my heart just grew three sizes. Yeah, man, Belly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> High school. That was crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Opening yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. It's very Baz Luhrmann esque. You're right. The way that they use yeah their musical the or their uh, music video sensibility and put them in in feature films. Pretty, pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what was that? We had another one in there. Yeah. Have you ever fallen in love at first sight, like Aaron's character Christian? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, lads. <laughs> well, there was this one time. <laughs> and, you know, it just, I, I didn't know where it, it just happened, right? And it just flashed across my computer screen, and it was this Guild D40 1963 guitar. And <laughs> I swear to you, I, that was it. That was it. I was done. <laughs> I was done, man. I bought it. I bought it from this guy called Walter E. Schnetzinger. And uh, he... Mm. Uh, he not remembering the guy's name. Oh, yeah. I bought it. Guys, and I, I got it shipped over from America. And it was amazing. I've still Wait, got okay, it. Are you, are you two still together? Are you two yeah, still you together? together? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. under it's under my bed at the moment. Uh, also, shout, you, to, I, 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 shout to Walter E. Schnetzinger, who somehow is an American. Walter E. Schnetzinger. Yeah. <laughs> Walter E. Of course, yeah. I would have said my wife, Nat, but um, I thought she hated me when we first met. So. Oh, no. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are still together. That's working out, too. Pretty good. That works. Yeah, I mean, it's it's working. pretty good, uh, pretty it's good, good. average, man. Yeah. <laughs> love at first sight. I love later on, man. It, 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 it all... What works right. out, you know, in, in the something. end. It, it works out in the end for Ricky. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what Christian would say about that. But. I think he would say, uh, you know, when you feel the thunderclap, when you feel the whole world stop and spin, except that one thing. I, I've definitely, you know, I've definitely felt that. I think that's, uh, that's something when you see somebody that for whatever reason, you're makeup and alchemy is con connects with their makeup and alchemy. It's like, and you're in the room with them and for whatever mm. reason, you only look at that person and everything else fades away. I mean, I think that's, mm. I've definitely experienced that before in my life. And, uh, I think that's, and I think that's what, you know, that's what Christian's trying to, that's what he's talking about. And that's what he's hoping for. And he's like, Oh, don't you dare look back. Yeah. yeah, but I believe in it. I believe in what you say, but I think it's yeah. There's something in the chemistry and makeup of your atoms and that person's and 
for whatever reason they're attracted to each other. Yeah. Hey man. Pheromones. Yeah. Pheromones, bro. Pheromones. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. Guys, which moment in the show do you miss playing the most? Oh man. Well, there's a I, lot of great, there's a lot of great moments in the show. Um, yep. Some of my mo some of my most fun, and I'm I could probably hopefully I'm not over speaking for the two of you gents, but some of the most fun I have in the show. <laughs> All of the weeks together, and you know, we spend a lot for those of you know, <laughs> we spend a lot of time together. A lot, actually, weirdly, the way people's tracks work out, we also spend a lot of time off stage together. You know what I mean? Where it's like other people you know, <laughs> the whole night. Yeah. So I miss the three. Of, yeah. I miss the three of us sitting in the box during the whole diamond sequence. And, Man, uh, yeah, but that's fun. You know, I actually you know, really miss that. Enough to live, but just enough where we don't pull focus. It's also always that little dance that we do. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. Actually, I posted a photo today on Instagram of us three in the box. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I tagged you. Check your Instagram, bro. Oh, man. I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> um, I tagged you. <laughs> <laughs> Check your Instagram. <laughs> So Why don't um, you click I, Instagram I'm, and check it for once. Why <laughs> <I> don't you? <laughs> He's not kidding. Don't in this. He's checking his bank Graham. Yeah. Why don't you go check on your son? Yeah. What is, he's sleeping, bro. <laughs> so is mine. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, so I was reading. Um. Uh. Uh, I'm still reading one of these Latrec biographies, and um, they said, okay, uh, two things. One, I'm just now getting to the end of this biography that I've been reading about a very long time. Finally realized that uh, the whole Latrec making the, uh, working on the theater show really happened. You know, he was designing the sets and all of that. Uh, one of the most popular critics at the time hated it. <laughs> uh, hey, the tracks <laughs> a bit, um, but that part happened. But the thing is, anyway, uh, that's not why I brought this up. Leading up to this uh, this time that Latrec participated in the theater, uh, while he was kind of like on his in his you know on his rise, he started going to theater shows. He found them really fun, and it was a thing. You know, like there was a certain class of people that would go to the theater shows. And I can't remember the name of this one particular director, but he revolutionized French theater by turning the lights off in the house. Ah, oh, interesting. Because up to that point, everybody went to the theater to, you know, look at each other. Right. They never really gave a, a shit about what was going on on the stage. Right. It was just a place. They just right? went. You know, it's Paris, man. It's Parisians, man. It's a social light, you know, very chic, you know, and just looking. If you're in the balcony seat, now you really can look and see what's going on, well, that, which exactly reminds me. The balcony seats oh. with that, so people can Yeah, see. but that's what I love about sitting with you guys, because there we can look at, the, we can really check the audience out. You know, they don't yeah. realize it, you know, we can really see them, you know. Yeah, we really, we really get yeah. to see who's in the house that oh, night. We see, we see a whole <laughs> range of emotions. We see these. We see, we see people like this. <laughs> <laughs> we see people like this, just like, or like. What about the one who never like turns crying. around to see uh, Satine coming, the coming down? Oh, you know, yeah, always yeah. got to get the uh, <laughs> look, 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 look. Yeah, people doing this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they just stare at the shadow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, ooh, ooh. like seeing people's faces. Ooh. Yeah, we have these like, you know, these cafe seats that are right up front. And they're actually in they're closer to That's the right. stage where Satine comes down further in the audience. And some people just some people turn around, some people watch the shadow, and then some people just sit there and just like they're refusing to turn around. <laughs> they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Following the rules. Everything Follow the rules. Yep. So, yeah. I don't turn around at the theater. You gotta no. look ahead. That's why that's why the seats are. Yeah. I'm just gonna like let this. it happen. I'm gonna let it happen. It's fine. <laughs> and you don't cross the street until the little the little crosswalk thing comes up. That's yeah. right. Even if the cop is saying that cross, no, cross. Nope. But go ahead, go. Hey. You got it. You, you know got my other, my other favorite bit <laughs> of the show that I miss? 
is is our we, for those of you that don't know um there's a bit before before the chandelier scene that's in the show <laughs> right and <laughs> oh my it's, god it's a moment that we get oh my god every night just something happens to us we turn into we turn into absolute idiots and we start <laughs> improvising something we just do like a full long form improv that and starts on stage and ends in our frozen position before the curtain goes up <laughs> and seconds, often milliseconds not, before the curtain <laughs> before the curtain goes up we are absolutely like hissing ourselves laughing and then we have to be really angry <laughs> charging forward down stage <laughs> and but that's how professional we are that's <laughs> very, very, very <laughs> because the moment the curtain goes up, we like encourage like. <laughs> Somebody want to read this one? Yes. Please. In the show, yes. Your collective mantra is truth, beauty, freedom, love. What are the ideals you live off, live by off stage? I, I think, I think. You know how we, we joke about being bohemians and stuff? I think, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, we say that we are, but we actually are. Like, I feel it, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're, you're an Argentinian living in France. You're definitely, <laughs> like, we like, travel you're, like you're, <laughs> you're the like, real deal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I feel that way now more than ever. Yeah, I feel you. I feel, I feel you, Ricky. During, during this time and this year, and everything that's happened and, you know, not to bring it way down, but to all be involved in an industry that's gone is, uh, and then talking about our show that, you know, it's about a group of artists trying to find a place for their art and put on a show that's being ripped away from them. And essentially that's what's happened to our entire industry. So I don't know. I, I feel, I feel more, more bohemian now because of that, I think, and just understanding what, what we don't get to do and how that, that need to express and all of that is kind of at the max it's ever been in my life. And I think those ideals, I think that's everything that we're seeing a huge cultural shift right now that people are fighting for those ideals and fighting for the space to live that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah I'm with you a hundred percent. And, and um, correction, uh, Ricky's a Chilean living in France. He's not that's right. Chile mm -hmm. yeah, straight. Um, Chile and Australia living in the press. I, I, I agree with you 100%, Aaron um, and Ricky. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, we're kind of living it. We're kind of living it. Uh, I, I, I do have a few things, though, that I, I mean, they're not like, they're not as neatly sewed up as freedom, beauty, truth, love, which, which is one of the reasons I like using that because it kind of just, it's like, bap, doo, doom, boom, bap, yeah, covers yeah. everything. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, for you young people out there, you know, if you don't have anything to go with besides that, I can pass on like three things growing up uh, or that I adopted later on that helped. Uh, trying to understand what makes me tick so that I can better empathize and trying to understand what's going on with other people. Two, try to leave a place better than you found it. Three, you don't always have to try to push the darkness away. Sometimes just try to introduce more light. Hmm. But, you one. know, or freedom, beauty, truth, love. Right. You know? That's yeah. great. I've got a good one. You see what I mean? It's just bam, 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 bam. Yeah. I've got a good one. I've got a good one. Acceptance. <laughs> just to accept things sometimes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can't change them. You've got to ride the wave. You got it. Mm. Just got to go with the flow. Sometimes you can't change that. You can't the change the flow of the river. Sometimes you just got to, you know, go with it. That's what mm. I think. That's what, the, you know, I've learned a lot mm. from that. You just got to go. And then, then different opportunities come. You got to, you take them as well, you know, but it's all, you just got to flow, go with the flow. Sometimes and then like, the river doesn't flow in a straight line either. Right. Mm. Okay. Over the place. Right. Just say, you Hey, the river doesn't flow in a straight line. That's right. Either. 
So right. don't, you know, so be able to ride the ups and downs because it's not, you know, to get to one place, you're not going to get there in a straight line. It's going to go all the way around, but yeah. Absolutely. Hmm. Yeah. We've all experienced that in our lives and our careers. And right. like you said, I mean, even, uh, you know, the pandemic life, everybody's living that now. Mm. Yeah. Agree. You remember what Paul Atreides said? I shall bend. I will bend like a reed in the wind. Yeah. Paul Atreides, anybody? June? No, we're all we're bending now. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Yeah, man, exactly. We're bending. Oh, if you don't bend, you break. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. How is the cast staying connected during COVID? Um, do you know what we used to at the beginning of of, of the of the shutdown? It was. <clears throat> I think it's because it was kind of such a big shock. We were kind of like FaceTiming quite a bit, weren't we? Like keeping more in contact and things like that. Yeah. And as it's gone it's on, it's a group like text. Fire and off, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to, to do yeah. that. And then with time differences and then, you know, everyone's got like things going on. But the occasional, you know, message here and there. It's like to touch base. How you doing? How you doing? You know, I message Tam a lot, you know, touch base. How you doing? You know, mm -hmm. and Robin as well. Hey, uh, well, you know, um, guys, I, I don't know what you think about this, but speaking of that, you know, that message group that we had, like when the shutdown first happened, I mean, we were all still kind of like, you know, like a 50 person amoeba kind of tandem yeah. mind meld energy meld, you know, you know, living, you know, on 40, 46th street together. Of course. I feel, I feel like we kind of needed that. You know, we had to be, you know, still really connected while we were trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Like our lives were just being completely turned upside down, you know? Yeah, because it was such then, a shock. You know, there was no closure. It's just like, you know, we were on this yeah. we were on this nine month, twelve month, you know, thirteen month from when we started rehearsal freight train that just mm. came to it like hit hit something that stopped it, right? Yeah. And then mm. you know, we, we left the theater that, that day thinking we were gonna be back the next day, thinking we were gonna be mm. back a month later, then three months later, now here we are eleven months later. So it's yeah, I think at the beginning uh -huh. everybody like you said, saw we were just like you know, spending more time together than anybody else in your, you know what I mean, your life is just this functioning thing. And uh, mm. so I think, yeah, it was probably, and then as it goes, I think everybody, you know, separates and is going about what they need to go about during this time. But the great thing is at any time you then come back together, you're just, it's like, it's like old mm. friends, right? you're just instantly yeah. back, right back to it. There's no, yeah. there's no need because you're so close to these people and share so much. There's no need. You can just pick right up. So, I think yeah. that's the beauty about this too, that we can I just pick right now. Mm. Man. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Um, wait, wait, someone read it. <laughs> have you? Okay, have you? Had <laughs> go, go on, go on, Aaron. <laughs> Have you had any Moulin Rouge or Broadway related dreams during the shutdown? Yeah, I just want to jump right in on that one. Um, <laughs> I have. <laughs> Look, I've been having a reoccurring dream for years and uh, I thought it was over. Um, and I get it happens when we're, when we're in production, you know, whenever I'm in production. Not always, but it happens, you know. But we were out of production for so long, I was shocked when one day I woke up like cold sweat out of this dream. And it wasn't necessarily, look, the point is, I end up on stage, I was doing something in a dream, and then I'm on stage, and it's a full house, and it's a big deal. And I have no idea. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like, what show is this? What are my lines? What is the entrance? What are the cues? Who are these people on the stage with me? But I'm on. I'm on 100%. And every, you know, people looking at me like they came, you know, like they know I'm in the show, you know? Yep. 
What the hell yeah. am I doing? I, I said that Ter- because, terrifying because I've had the same, a very similar recurring dream for many years. You too, Ricky. Yeah. What's your oh my God. It happens every now and again. I have the one oh. where it's, I'm not on stage. I'm in my dressing room and mm. we get a five minute call mm. and I freak out because I don't realize I have no idea what show it is. I don't Fuck, know what yeah. the play is. I try to go get a stage manager and I say, can you please just tell me what show this is? And they say, <laughs> they laugh like I'm kidding. And I say, no, I don't know what this is. And they keep laughing at me like I'm kidding. And then it's places and I have to go out. So that's the oh dream my God. I have. Pretty much. That's pretty much. That's it. That's it. Wow. That's horrible. Terrifying. I get, I get the one where I have to go on for someone that I haven't. Oh, you know, you know the part, right? You're on for mm-hmm. like, oh man, you're on for Christian. I'm like, but that's not me. That's not my part. <laughs> oh, you, you know it. It's like, and you're on, and I'm, you're like, what? Fuck. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, we're all we're all really messed up, man. <laughs> I hate that dream. Yeah, that whole part of the brain right there is just. Wow. Although I did have one, I can't remember what it was, but I did have a dream the other day, and it was like a. It was one of those dreams, but I kind of woke up thinking, oh, man, I miss it. Like, it yeah, was, yeah. But it was, it was, a, it was a, a dream that I wouldn't normally like. Yeah. I, I woke up going, oh, man. I had, oh, a, little, wow. I had a little bit of a, this mm. dream in reality. My, my first Broadway show was Hairspray. I left the show and I've been out of the show for over a year at this time. I was rehearsing a show at Playwrights Horizons. And my girlfriend at the time mm. was doing hairspray and I got a text from her at about five o'clock on a Tuesday. And she said, I think stage management's about to call you. And I said, okay. And they called me. It was maybe mm. it was like five 30. And they said, the dude playing the part that I had played before hurt his back. The understudy is new and not ready to go on. Can we be at the show? Seven o'clock show. Oh my God. And I hadn't done oh, it my like goodness. 15 months. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> And I just went out and did the show and it was a blast. But then I had to go back the second night and the second night was an absolute nightmare. It was like, oh, the first oh night, I didn't have enough time to think about it. And just the muscle memory happened. And then, but then the second night I crept, totally cracked and burned. Bro, uh, that, that exactly happened to me. That really? Exactly, oh yeah. I was, in, I was doing, I was in Joseph uh, at the Adelphi in London um, a few years back and Greece was at the Piccadilly theater. And mm. I'd done Greece like, I think it was like a year and a half before. And I'm always in town, usually around about five o'clock, you know, early. And I get up having a coffee and I get a call from the <laughs> resident director, Jason. He's like, Ricky. I was like, G'day, man. How's it going? He's like, yeah. Are you in town? I was like, yeah. He's like, um, uh, we've got no Kaniki. Um, uh, can you come and do the show? And I was like, uh, yeah. If- yeah, 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 if you clear it through the producers, like, fine. <laughs> so the producers from Greece called. Wow. Joseph. Oh, you were in a show at the same time? Yeah. Wow. And they let me out. I get a call oh from, from the production. God. I think one of the producers from Joseph. And he was like, listen, we've, got, we've had a call from Greece. And um, not the country, the musical. And um, <laughs> and listen, we can we can cover you if you want. We can say that you we can't let you out. And I was like, no, nah, it's fine. Let's do it, right? Wow. Ooh. I ran over Ooh. on the phone to my agent. Ooh. I ran over, right? I ran over. I met the Rizzo. She'd just come off holiday, come back off holiday. I was like, how you doing? We ran through a couple of scenes, and then started getting started getting my hair ready, man. Started getting my wow. hair ready. Wow. And got your arm ready? Got that grease lightning arm loosened up? Oh, yeah. It was different. It was Arlene Phillips' choreography, man. I didn't have that choreography. <laughs> right? and, um, <laughs> I know what you mean. It was like nuts. But I, I got, I, I just went into the same routine that I had. You know, the same you things found I it? used to do, things I used to touch, like what I mm. used to watch. And then, like, I nailed it and I couldn't wow. sleep for the next three nights because I just wow. was like buzzing. Like, wow. how did I do that? Like, that's amazing. Wow. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that is so that really is. theater, right? That's like, you have to just kind of make it happen. And 
Yeah, I was so when we get back to the show, we'll have like two days rehearsal and, right. you know, we'll be it's back it. in, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, two days. I'm I don't think I'll be back in my pants. I don't think I'm going to be back into my mess. <laughs> I'm going to be back in the dressing room. <laughs> We're going to be like, we're stuck. Oh like, my he's crying in his dressing room. He's like, okay. <laughs> right. okay. What, what are your thoughts on virtual theater? Are you doing it or watching it? And do you think it has a post-COVID future? Hmm. Interesting. Virtual. That's not, I, I think, yeah, I think right now, virtu like virtual theater in the sense of um, Zooms or Zoom readings or Zoom performances or, you know, charity things for, you know, people coming together on Zoom. I think that's such a wonderful thing now to uh, continue to work on work and and um, be able to support mm. theater artists and theater communities and theaters. But I uh, I hope that we're not doing too much more of that because I hope it means we're back actually in the room. Yeah. But, mm. but I think in terms of virtual like online theater and performance and broadcasting live theater, I hope that continues. That I hope that is something that mm. you know I think we're 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 learning. It's like the movie industry is learning that they need to stream movies at the same time and maybe the pandemic has brought that to a head. And I still hope yeah. that, you know, people smarter than me are thinking about how to monetize and put forward live theater streaming, you know, to the masses because there's people that can't come see theater in New York. And so I, I hope, I hope we take things from that. Yeah. I think that's the thing. It's accessibility. It's like we, it, we've made like, you know, it's made us as performers a lot more accessible to, to fans and being mm. able to reach them directly and, you know, ch you know, maybe brighten up their lives in a more direct way. Um, mm. I definitely think that that's going to continue. I mean, it's, it's kind mm. of changed us. It's changed the, the, the way of thinking, especially like in, in, not just in our industry, but other workplaces as well. It's like working from home, working remotely. Um, you know, it frees up different things to do, like time, scheduling um i know that in mm. in london they did a production of like a string production of i love you your perfect now change um hmm. which is you know i think it i think it did well you know but it was it was solely like on on stage with no audience and stuff and it was it was it's kind of weird but i think it was it was clunky but i think it had the right idea and it's it's going to evolve from that you know so i think different mm. things are going to start to come out definitely yeah. yeah 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 i think there's um i think we have um a very uh I, you know how will it manifest I, I i don't know but i i think um 50 years from now 30 years from now 2100 this period will be the moment they look people look back to and say and that was that was from there we is when we decided to or from there is when we saw the emergence of or there is when the door was open and could not be closed again for uh, another way of thinking um another way of uh, another a new, another type of exploration there are things that are never going to go back, you know? Yeah. 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 I don't know what those things are, you know, but uh, that happens out of every, every, every like hardship though. Do you know what I mean? It's like something comes, mm. something, something good comes out of it always. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. my like, and, and let, and, hope. yeah. And look, and I mean, has there ever been a time in the history on planet earth where all the theaters were shut down? all mm. yeah yeah i mean there might have been a few theaters still open somewhere we don't know but in the amazon jungle they had the covid moving around man i mean where there was at least two three months nothing no movement yeah i don't know if that's ever happened um even if there isn't somebody right now thinking about what the theater of the future is going to be which i know that there are but even if there wasn't somebody Trying to figure out what is the theater of the future, or what is the concert of the future, or this or that. It's it's 
it has it, I think it's been awakened inside of us, you know. Maybe some kid Ricky's the the age of Ricky's son or or, or my son, something's gonna pop in their head one day, mm. you know, and they're just gonna have an idea because things are different for them. You yeah, know, they just have a different starting point than we do. Yeah, right. You know. Mm. Anyway, I hope theater as we know it uh, survives. I mean, it survived this long. Yeah, it's gonna keep. It's not, this isn't gonna stop it. And no, survived. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely definitely like <laughs> sitting in a theater. There's nothing mm. like seeing it live. Nope, that's the thing. Nope. Yeah. 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 Hmm. It's well, have you, how have you how have you all been staying creative during the pandemic? <sighs> I've been, I've been just working on. Like here on the house and riding my tractor and clearing the land. I picked up lots of gravel yesterday. Um, you know, did my driveway. I made a window. I made a window from scratch. Wow. Like there were like where there was no window, there is now a, a window w- from scratch. Uh, wow. <laughs> can um, my son come and work on your te- on your terrain when he gets a little older? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're looking at we're looking at things, other things to you know to keep us creative. We're like, what do we, what do we want to do? Do we want to, you know, different business ideas? So it's it's kind of cool. I've been playing guitar a lot. You know, I've been teaching Zoom, like like acting, like voice coaching and acting through song on Zoom quite a bit, which is going really well. And I really love teaching. I love it. Like yeah. to see mm. someone understand something or something clicks that it makes their performance go from here to here. It just, oh, that gives me such a buzz. Like I absolutely love it. That's awesome. Mm. You know? That is awesome. They keep and you have students from all over the world, Ricky? Yeah, that's the thing. Like most of my students are like, in America, I've had students from America, South Africa, Chile, Venezuela, Colombia, um, Russia, France, like in Bordeaux, that's like, um, wow. you know, England, wow. so from all over the world. And that's like accessibility. It's like I ne- would never been able to do that before. Mm. And, you know, people are really, you know, it's, it's helping people. I was yeah. thinking of that today. We're lucky this didn't happen in 1997. Oof. Could you imagine? Yeah. What, what, what? Oh, oh, you'd right. be on our own, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be on my Nokia 5110 playing Snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Aaron, check it out. <laughs> I'd be like, what? Uh, right. oh, um, what are we doing? Anybody heard from Ricky? Like, uh, <laughs> He's in France, man. <laughs> I sent a letter. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Hold on, let me text him. Let me text him. <laughs> my calling hey, card is out, out of minutes, so I can't four, call him. <laughs> what year did you say? What year was that? 97. What year? So we were still, yeah, we were still, I think I still had a pager in 97. I didn't, I did not have a cell phone. I didn't have, yeah. a, and I didn't have a pager yeah. either. With my friends had pagers. I wasn't that cool. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I had a phone. I had a phone. I think uh, in 97, I think it was a, it was a Sony Ericsson. Wow. Sony yeah. Ericsson. Yeah. 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 yeah, Sony Ericsson. Yeah. yeah. I've been reading a lot. I've been reading a lot during this time. Um, I don't know. I've been, there's, there's so much stuff that's been happening. I've just tried to um, read and listen and take kind of take stock of what's going on in the world around mm. my own life. And, you know, th- I think that's creative in itself. Um, mm. Done a tiny bit of writing, which I've never done before, which has been interesting. Uh, but yeah, mm. I try to I think curiosity is the, that's the that's the thing for an actor, right? And so I've just trying, been trying to remain in touch with my curiosity. Very good. Ah, that's wonderful. Mais je parle français maintenant. Oh, oh yeah. So are you, are you like fluent now? I mean, you live in France. Oui, uh, je. Uh, J'ai toujours euh, besoin un, un peu de euh, pratique, euh, de pratique, euh, mais la prononciation est euh, très difficile pour moi parce que je euh, parle espagnol. Hmm. Oui. Yeah. I actually think I just right. understood that hardly. I just said the pronunciation is super hard for me because I speak Spanish and it's right. really different. It, wow. That's what gets right. me. 
but slowly mm. slowly i'm starting to understand things on the radio you oh know? yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> but it's cool that's cool do you watch yeah. telly with the subtitles uh yeah. You watch, uh, oh, I guess you probably, uh, I said you watch Sally with the subtitles, but then maybe you're probably just mostly watching things streaming. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and we've got satellite TV back to the UK TV. That's cheap. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, TV. <laughs> yeah, ITV, BBC One and BBC Two. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but you're, 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 you're reading and writing. Do you want to talk about uh, some of the stuff you're writing or uh, reading or? Uh... Um, Writing, I wrote like, um, I wrote a bit of a, I was on a series a couple years ago and a guy that when I was working in Vancouver, another guy that was on the show with me, we were both there and we, you know, we all, we all thought the series ended too soon. So we kind of wrote like a, uh, like a short that's like, would be, you know, six or 18, six to 18 months later, kind of like a postscript to where we were to then maybe bridge to the story continuing. So we kind of, dab we dabbled in that. So it was stuff I was very familiar with. It wasn't kind of wasn't out of the ether, but that was really nice to work on. And uh, we were going to shoot it, but then COVID kind of started to happen a little more. Uh, got the case mm. of being really high over there, and so we didn't do it. But one day we will. But yeah, that was that was it. Was great. It was nice to flex those muscles in a way that I, you know, I'd always thought about it. You know, what I mean, I've, when we read so many scripts, I've read so many things. I like you, you're. Yeah. Then when you start to actually do it, you're like, oh, I, I'm not super proficient at this but i understand how it works in a weird way so it's, yeah. it's mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that i never done but done with it, so kind of understood how it worked it was pretty cool that's great. yeah yes that's uh as you guys know um you know, my partner and i had a kid uh, three months ago and that's what you're doing to keep creative that's about the most creative i think you can <laughs> it's pretty it's it's amazing creative you know, he's, he's three months old now yeah and you know what's also sleep, really sleep. you sleeping good you know I, i've gotten used to operating with a certain level of sleep deprivation hmm. that i didn't think i would be okay with and like if you told me in the past i was like nah that's just too much <laughs> but um yeah uh you know, the first two months were really, uh, you know, it was really uh, disorienting. B fortunately, um, he's uh, he's pulling six hours overnight now, six oh, or seven great. hours. So it's great. The weird thing, though, is that I'm still waking up in the middle of the night and mm. staying awake. I'm still on the same schedule he put me on when he was. When you, when you know, do that, does he get up uh, and you? That's what I was gonna say. Is like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, uh, like, pass, me that, pass me that bottle of red. Yeah. yeah. Bring that over. One day, one day, if yeah. I raise him right, <laughs> if I raise him right, <laughs> take care of Papa one day. Um, so, so that's totally been like the whole deal. Um, yeah, but cool. I have, I've been writing as well. Um, I started writing in the spring, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably uh, tell you guys specifics about it uh, at yeah. another time. But I, I started writing in the spring, and um, was really fortunate to. Um, oh, it, it's a it's a television series, oh, and um, yeah, and I was really fortunate that a mate of mine that I grew up with, who knew that I was working on something, and kind of just thinking about you know other things to do with my time and other ways to think about like, you know, you know, what to do with my career as time goes on, you know, mm -hmm. anyway, he, he invested in a nice chunk of money in it. So we, we started a production company. Um, Amazing. Going into post-production in uh, next month. Amazing. Uh, Pre-production -pre 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 for uh proof of concept. You know, awesome, congratulations. That's yeah. great. Man. Cheers. Cheers. That's great. Yeah. Okay, last question. What lessons do you hope the theater industry learns from the shutdown? <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. What lessons? Well, oh, I, wow, think, I just heard a song uh, starting. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I think, um, good one. as we were saying, I don't know, for me, I, I, I think I can safely say I've been somebody that's never taken my work or the opportunity to work for granted. But I think 
when we're, we've been a part of something that's just been totally gone. Um, it showed how mm. important it is to those of us that work from the inside of it and surround it, but it also has shown uh, how important it is to the people that view it and consume it. And so, you know, I think we can never ever take these things for granted again. And, mm. uh, you know, but there's mm. just been so much, like Sai, you were saying, like, it's, this thing happened and then stuff is going to change, right? So ho I just hope mm. that this moment of kind of everything stopping is allowing everyone to re-examine their own place and how that fits and everyone else, you know, what's important with our industry, our world. And I just hope that everyone is taking stock and it seems like people are. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm mm. optimistic about that. Yeah. You know, a lot, a lot I, to do. I but. think, I think on, on, a, on a larger scale, I think it's highlighted how, how much also it's it's not appreciated by government yeah. on both sides of the pond i think they, they could have mm. you know had more of a support structure in place maybe i don't know if you know how far ahead in the future they could have seen this coming but they, they could have done a bit more to i know certainly in england you have, they, they could have included them more especially as you know uh, most of the theater industry is all self-employed like a uh, kind of like corporations in, in, in or incorporated sorry in, in america everyone's pretty much self-employed so they could have had more of an infrastructure and more help in place for yeah. the theater industry and i know that that's the same in america as well so you know um i know that in france um they they were a bit more supportive like in europe for the theater industry they were, with more grants and things like that to artists and and you know theater um uh, theater houses and things like that so you know uh, maybe they could learn a little bit more from what's happened i think yeah yeah, yeah. thank you yeah. thank you thank you tdf i love you gents yeah yeah, yeah. thanks tdf yeah. love yeah. you guys too man thank you I enjoyed that. laughing i love yeah you. yeah yeah yeah, same here, lads. You guys take care, man.